Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm the president of Virgin Galactic, and uh, any of you who've been over in the uh, main exhibition hall may have been to our stand and seen uh, Spaceship Two and White Knight Two, which is a space launch system that's been developed by Virgin Galactic for a number of purposes. It's based on the X Prize winning Spaceship One that was developed by Bert Rutan in 2004. And we have now developed the system into one which has an initial market of space tourism. We've got 280 customers signed up. We have $40 million in the bank. We hope we got it in the bank anyway. We did last night, but we might not this morning. Um, and uh, we are developing a space launch system that is capable of carrying human beings into space as tourists. But we've also developed the system to be capable of doing suborbital science. And we've been saying a little bit about that over the past few months. We're working with a number of organizations now looking at um, uh, actually carrying scientists on board doing microgravity experiments. We've been talking to NASA about uh, a program to do this. They've issued an RFI in this area for suborbital space science with the system. And we are also looking at developing the White Knight 2 launch aircraft that can carry a 17-ton payload to 50,000 feet to be able to launch an unmanned vehicle capable of getting a 100-kilogram uh, small sat into low Earth orbit. And tonight, Sir Martin Sweeting and myself will be talking about other issues and that particular issue of small sats and their future and science in space and the commercialization space at our um, session we're doing at 6 o'clock tonight. But that's not the purpose of being here today. We're here today to announce an agreement that we've now signed with NOAA to do a series of um, atmospheric experiments, which I'll be talking about in a minute. But first of all, just for a couple of minutes, I'd like to say a word from the individual, Sir Richard Branson, who's been funding this project, who's going to say a few words about why we wanted to get into bed with NOAA to do some climate science work with Virgin Galactic. So over to Sir Richard. Well, hello, and I'm really sorry I can't be with you there for the 59th International Astronautical Congress. Glasgow is a fantastic city, and it's wonderful to see that the IF and our friends, the British Interplanetary Society, have brought the Congress back to the UK for the first time in 20 years. Well, I'm absolutely delighted that we are able to announce today a milestone for the company at such a prestigious venue. Virgin Galactic is beginning an initiative in climate science research as the first step towards making available our new vehicles for commercial use by scientists, engineers and astronauts worldwide. It is particularly exciting to be launching this initiative with such world-class research organizations. Our mission for Virgin Galactic has always been to transform the levels of safety, frequency, cost, and environmental impact that has been associated with space access, particularly manned space access, for almost half a century. In doing so, we believe there would emerge new markets and technologies for space, markets and technologies which would be essential to help meet many of our greatest earthbound challenges in the coming decades and help answer some of the deepest questions we can ask about our universe. To my mind, there is no greater or more immediate challenge than that posed by climate change, and we have already done a fair amount of Virgin, particularly in the transportation sector, to showcase and push new technologies that will be part of the solution. Our new space launch aircraft, White Knight 2, which we rolled out for the first time just a month ago, is among the world's most fuel-efficient aircraft by virtue of the fact that it is wholly constructed of carbon composites. By the time it flies commercially, it should also be using renewable jet aviation fuels currently being developed and tested by Virgin Atlantic and its partners. Because of this and other innovations, Virgin Galactic will be operating the world's most environmentally benign space launch system. It is therefore more than flitting that the very first science to be conducted on board our new vehicles by world-renowned scientists will be specifically directed at increasing our understanding and knowledge of our atmosphere and from there to inform our decisions as to the most effective ways of dealing with climate change. In the years ahead, we look forward to the global science community using Spaceship Two and White Knight Two as a platform for a range of research and technology demonstration missions, as well as a way for countries of all sizes to begin or expand their astronaut training programs. So it is an exciting day, and I have no doubt, judging by the enthusiasm already shown in the science community, that this will be just the first of many such announcements. Thank you, Richard. Um, so what we're announcing this morning, before you get on with the plenary sessions over the next 10 minutes, is an agreement with NOAA, between Virgin Galactic and NOAA, 
an MOU to begin a series of climate science experiments on board both White Knight 2 that you can see here. This is White Knight 2 a few weeks ago as it began its ground testing prior to its flight testing starting next month. And uh, we will be putting some instruments on White Knight 2 that NOAA are providing. Now, first of all, let me describe the White Knight 2 vehicle. The White Knight 2 vehicle is capable of uh, flying a 17-ton payload to 50,000 feet, but we will be test flying it at altitudes quite considerably above that. The Spaceship 2, which will go underneath it and underslung in the middle and launch at 50,000 feet, will obviously be taking people and payload to about 110 kilometers. Now, it is that that NOAA are taking advantage of with this project. Most of the atmospheric testing that NOAA does is limited to about 25,000 feet in altitude. Now, what we are able to do with this experimental program on a no exchange of funds basis at the moment, because the FAA rules don't allow us to open for commercial business just yet, so we'll be working on a no exchange of funds basis with, with NOAA, we will be able to put a series of three experiments onto White Knight 2 and then transfer those onto Spaceship 2 when it starts test flying, which will now allow NOAA to do a considerably greater amount of both carbon dioxide analysis and a number of other uh, gases such as methane gas analysis right up through the regular structure of our test flying program. Now, the test flying program for Virgin Galactic is one of the most extensive ever undertaken. It will be more extensive than the test flying program for Concorde because clearly this is an entirely new area and an entirely new era. The idea of commercialising human spaceflight and getting a licence from the FAA to take people into space is not something that the FAA or ourselves are going to take at all lightly. But that does give the opportunity for really quite an exciting range of experiments. Uh, an instrument from Picaro, for example, um, which will be able to analyse, uh, as I say, both the range of gases in the atmosphere right up to uh, 50,000 feet where White Knight is going to fly. There will also be a, an automated flask sample system which will track over 40 uh, gases in the upper atmosphere. And uh, an air core sampler, which is a concept that was initiated originally by um, Dr. Peter Tans as well. Now, the exciting thing about this is this is going to allow NOAA, um, as well as obviously getting a much wider range of regularised um, samples of uh, the atmosphere right the way up to 50,000 feet for White Knight 2 and then up through the ionosphere as we begin the Spaceship 2 flying program next year, culminating in Spaceship 2's first flight into space in late 2009 or early 2010. That will allow NOAA to use this data to also um, help calibrate um, a satellite which is being launched in conjunction with NASA, uh, the OCO satellite. And uh, that will be a process that they will be able to undertake over the next few years of the program. And then as we go commercial, the plan is to keep these instruments on board through the commercial flying program over the next 10 years. Now, at that point, um, I would like to hand over to uh, Brent Smith, who's the Chief of International Interagency Affairs for NOAA. Thank you, Brent. Thank you very much, Will. Uh, let me just briefly say that we are excited to extend our research to yet another platform. Many of you are familiar in the space community with the satellites of NOAA. But uh, I should say that we also have ocean buoys, we have ground observations, we have flown climate instruments for many years on commercial aircraft, and this provides us yet another opportunity. In fact, our, quoting our administrator, Conrad Laudenbacher, we need data and observations to understand how our climate changes. And this affords us a new and unique opportunity to gather samples and measurements at much higher altitudes than we can usually achieve. Now, I think many of you are also familiar with the global Earth observing system of systems. Uh, Conrad Laudenbacher is one of four co-chairs. And actually, let me put in a plug for tomorrow's plenary event at 1400, where we will be addressing the GEOS and the results of a recent ministerial summit. And this dimension, this platform, uh, not only in terms of strapping instruments on this aircraft and, and taking measurements also in situ observations from this particular altitude, but also import, providing important calibration to our satellites that are in orbit. So last week, our, our Director of Ocean and Atmospheric Research entered into a letter of intent with Virgin Galactic, and we are looking forward and have the, the uh, people in our research lab in Boulder, Colorado, working energetically to, to prepare and, and work these, uh, these uh, instruments and enter into this collaboration.